Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this 10th episode of Best Candy Ever. I cannot believe that I've even been able to reach this 10th episode. They say that for podcasts, things are usually downhill after the seventh episode and that they normally don't even continue. And that's normally their breaking point and that's where they stop. But I've just been so inspired and motivated by you guys. Thanks to everyone who has been showing their support, continuing to watch Best Candy Ever, um, commenting, liking, subscribing, um, giving me feedback. Everything has just been so great. And it's been an incredible journey since this started in September. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for all of your support and that I'm forever grateful for everything and that there will definitely be more episodes to come despite this month long hiatus. So thank you for um, to everyone for understanding and just uh, being here. Um, no matter what, I truly appreciate you all. Yo, 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 what is up, candy fam? Welcome to this episode of Best Candy Ever with me, your host, Renee, aka Bass Drop Princess. Today, I have a very, very special guest on the podcast. She has known me for what has been a little bit more than half my life. And I say that because I am 30 years old now and I have known her since I was uh, 14. Yeah, 14 years old. So this person has seen me go through so much in my life and is somebody that I really love and am inspired by, but also love to make fun of and hang out with. Uh, Without further ado, please welcome my guest, aka best friend of People's Chloe, aka Chloe. So I don't know what you're talking about. I'm actually 22 years old. Um, I guess you're older than me. I am 22 years old, right? Yeah, I'm 22. And I was born in 99. Chloe, you wish you were 22. Actually, we both wish that we were 22. We're old now. What are you talking about? I'm really young. I'm, I'm not too old to rave. You. I look like this every day. This is just... How, I'm just kidding. Young people don't even look like this. Is what ages me the most is actually like this type of makeup. No one does makeup like this. They all look like Billie Eilish. You know what I mean? They all look like. What are you talking about? Girls look like that all the time. Instagram is not real life. Okay, teenage girls, they don't do that shit. Teenage girls don't do that. I feel like the people that do do that are the girls that were like heavily influenced by YouTube. Uh, influencers I, I, and makeup influencers. I feel like dark, bright stuff like this makeup is 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 kind of out now. You know what I mean? Like we're not cool. I feel like we're still cool, but we also worked at Sephora, and I feel like this was like the it's thing. It's never gonna die. No, like if I, no. if I can throw more colors on, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. So Chloe and I both worked at Sephora for a super super long time, and this was actually like our uniform was to wear. Uh, we had to wear at least three eyeshadows. And if we didn't, we were like not in uniform, which is really dumb. I don't even think that's the same rule anymore. But No, you can just straight up not wear any makeup, which uh, everyone rejoiced. Yeah, which is kind of, I mean, that's cool that they're doing that. But I feel like if you're, if somebody's going to do my makeup, it sounds really bad, but I want their makeup. I want to be able to see what they can do. Like I, But if it's a dude though, if it's a dude doing your makeup, that's true. But whenever I may not be wearing makeup. Actually, you know what? Guess what? If it's a duty, he wearing makeup too. All right. That, um, and I loved it when our, our coworkers would do that because then they would look so freaking fierce and you could see what they bring to the table. And I think a lot of the times that's what people want to see is what you can bring to the table. And sometimes the, the way you, the only way you do that is how you present yourself because that's like the first thing they see, you know? Yeah, and I wonder what people are thinking right now. Are they thinking that, girl, that wig? No, no, girl. Is that what they're thinking right now? I, I think it too, but I never okay. wear it. I personally love it. Everyone, I told really? before we started that she looked like she looks like a mermaid, and you you were like, I do, and I was like, yes, it's like long and wavy. Yes. Well, I I, I want to see what I look like with bangs because you know I normally wear a wig anyway, but like so I got a cheap one. I feel like for a cheap one, it's actually pretty good quality. Uh, just to see if, how I feel like with bangs. And I don't know. It, my boyfriend was like, no. And it just, I don't know if it looks, I don't know, maybe it's the color. I don't know. 
Well, it's anywhere. You and he's also not used to you with bangs, so he might just. You guys just need to get used to it. You normally don't have anything with bangs. Exactly. I like it. I think you look like a mermaid, kind of like a fifties mermaid with the headband that you put on. Thank you. Yeah, I changed it. I took the bow out and put a headband on because I thought it had tied everything together. What? What, what am I doing? <laughs> Why? Who cares? Nothing. Right. You just want to look really nice on the yes. best podcast I, on I, earth. I, I, I think I haven't uh, tried to look nice in about a million years. Um, I've girl, what, you and I, I both. First off, what day is it? Uh, it's Tuesday. It's the day of my podcast that I asked um, you to do. Yes. Um, yeah. I guess uh, tomorrow I have to go to work. Um, and so now we people are going to see how much of a. a I want to say a real raver. At, first off, I feel like we need to have a test to see who's like a real raver or not, because you're you're like a real raver, but I, I haven't raved in Hold so on. long. What makes you a real raver? I don't know. Well, first off, um, real raver. Well, we have to define what exactly are raves, because if you've only ever gone to massive shows, is that really a rave, or do you have to go to the tiny shows out in the desert if you live where the, there's desert out in the middle of nowhere, you know? Um, so there's that. Then there is like, okay, um, what do you do at raves? My ass is old. And when I said I'm old, I meant I am 22 years old, which is very old for ravers because I'm 22. Turning 22, I mean, because I was born in 89. I mean, 99, because I'm 22 and I'm turning 22 this year. But you know what? 22 is very young for ravers, I think. I mean, yeah, there's some that are like 18, 19, but we're considered ancient. I come on, Clay, I freaking call myself like a veteran raver. Like I in saw my that. Bio. I saw I was like, you're a vet, vet. she's a veteran raver. She's We've been friend. raving since freaking 2011. I think we're veteran ravers, Chloe. It's been 10 years. 10 years, yeah. It's been 10 years. Yeah, 10 uh, years. And by 10 years, she means to. I am sticking to the goddamn lie. All right. I mean the truth. You'll only get away with it because you look young, Chloe. That, and also act makeup young, though. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the makeup I feel is well, no, I've seen 22 year olds or girls in their early 20s that look bomb shit with no but putting a ton of makeup on covers uh especially if it's matte, fine lines, wrinkles. Not that I have any of those, but um, you know, uh, like you remember that poster of Donnie and Marie that was down uh downtown oh uh, on the flamingo, I think. Yeah. So, like, what older women will sometimes do, like, for photo shoots is they'll put a fuck ton of black. It'll be just the smokiest eye ever. And they'll blow it out really big because that way you're not seeing all the little details, which is a perfectly good trick to do. Ladies, if you don't know, if you're trying to cover some stuff up, like, big old smoky, put the eyeshadow all up on here, you know. That's how I... Uh, prevent creasing from my concealers. I just put put more eyeshadow down. Just put it more down. They'll- yeah, these makeup tricks are actually true, everyone. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I actually do that with all my makeup looks. Uh, like I always put like some type of colored eyeshadow right underneath, kind of smoke it out. And then I, when I really want to make sure you can't see any fine lines, I just put a ton of glitter like how I did today and just kind of brought it out. But yeah, the smoky eye is definitely a good way to hide eye wrinkles, but see, that's how you know we're old because we care about that type of shit. All right. Yes. So, but back to what makes a real raver. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not the best judge of this because, uh, I, I can tell you, I don't know any of the new artists coming out, you know, it, it either comes up on my Pandora and I like it or it doesn't. Um, I can tell you one artist that I listen to a lot. I don't know if you heard of them. They're called Scudda. Uh, excellent. The excellent. Um, sometimes when I'm at work, uh, I'll put on their SoundCloud and my favorite is to listen to their Lost Lands one. It's so good. And then like, I'll be getting like turned up and that's like, I don't know what's going to happen. I've listened to it like a million times. And then, um, and, and, and I'm sure like, you know, I'm, I'm like doing this, you know, while, while I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. headbanging, but I won't do that. Like if, you know, there's someone in front of me, like a, a defendant or whatever, but if, um, if, I, if I'm in one of the cubicles in the back, yeah, like uh, I'll, I won't even need to, you know? Yeah, I'll, like, I'll, I'll know has, it, has it ever happened where you're listening to a song and all of a sudden, you know, the bass is about to drop or something's about to drop or some sound's going to happen. And you go like, 
Like you, you do some hand gesture, like you are the, the maestro of the music. I do that all the time. And I, I know that's probably one of the many reasons why people think I'm weird. No, it's not weird at all. You're just channeling your inner producer slash DJ self. <laughs> um, there's this thing called like bass space that b- basically everybody does. Yeah, there you go. You're, you're just back, back in my day. We called that Thea's face. No, no, what? Fizz face, remember? With the hyphy? Fizz face. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Back, back in my day, when we made a sound, a face like that is because we was listening to hyphen music. I remember. We, we weren't listening. Them, 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 them bass drops, none of them, none of them existed back then. See, see, y'all kids, y'all kids thought you invented everything, but no, y'all didn't. No, that was them fizz faces. Who coined that? Was it E-40 who coined yes. that? Was it... Okay, because I briefly remember that. I, I remember the, the saying, Fizz, but um, I don't remember exactly who, who coined it. Oh my remember? gosh, Hyphy. <laughs> yes. Make a baby mama want to slap her baby daddy. Hyphy. Um, Go slap the song. whip. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hyphy uh, is underrated. Well, it was overrated for a while, then it like died. Yeah, I, I feel like it, it could have been bigger. I feel like it could have been like, uh, remember Crunk? What the fuck are we doing talking about other types of music? There is no other types of music except for uh, for uh, rave music, like uh, trance and um, dubstep. And uh... hey, this is what makes this podcast cool. Is um, of course we talk about candy, and we're going to get to that because we are going to talk about candy but it's also a free form podcast so we can literally talk about anything i don't want there to be any type of restrictions or oh we can't talk about this because it's not rave related like of course like we're gonna talk things rave and candy absolutely but um this is a place where we can like just chill express decompress so eat, don't eat uh, honey roasted cashews and make noise. really cr- loud crunchy noises next to the microphone yeah this is a place where we can do that because you, you want us to have, you know, freedom and really express ourselves. And the, the one way I like to express myself is eating snacks that are crunchy. Okay, so I told this bitch before we started recording that she could not eat her goddamn walnuts. This is how you know this is my best friend who I have on the podcast. Because I told her, Chloe, you can hear the chewing and all the munch munch and the odd, like that noise through the microphone. Especially because you have a nice microphone and... You're going to be chewing, but I told her if you're going to eat, just lean back. That's fine. It's just the audio quality matters. She cares about you. I care about you guys because I don't want you to listen to some some shitty audio uh, of Chloe. She doesn't want you to listen to some walnuts. cow, some cow shoving nuts in her face. All right. But Chloe, this cow has priorities and those nuts look really delicious. You're not a cow, but whatever. Anyways, uh, let's... I swear to God, if, you're, if your fucking boyfriend takes that little audio clip of me saying those nuts look really delicious and fucking puts that... In, I'm going to fucking kill him. Because <laughs> I realize, like, anything I can say... And what? Like, Just because like, you said that, he's going to do it. I'm going to make him do it. And it's going to be called The People's <laughs> Flow. That's what that song will be called. It'll be a great sample to use. Oh my gosh, that'll be so funny if that people were, like, saying that. What did you say? Those nuts look delicious? Or... <laughs> Kind of like, um, uh, ooh, that should be hitting different. That's what people them that's look delicious saying. I've never, I got, I've never heard that them should be here hitting different. I've never heard that. Oh my gosh, I, mean, I have heard it. Because I'm young and I'm hip. Yeah, basically, it is uh, Grizz and Subtronics. It the song came out like last last year, 2019. Uh, they actually. Uh, Subtronics actually dropped it at Force for the first time and we were there when he played it and it was super dope and then it like blew the fuck up and everyone says ooh that shit be hitting different but instead people are gonna say those nuts you're, were delicious or whatever the hell not, well it's never gonna happen it's never gonna be a thing but no, you're no, not no. a real raver unless you've uh, gone to a show and then a DJ premiere song that became a hit I'm just kidding I was going to say, you sound like a fucking bitch right now. Just I know you that there's so many people that have it. They're going to be like heard a song for what? the first time. Who the who the hell is this B? Yeah, who is this bitch that doesn't even know uh, that Subtronic song? But yeah, anyways. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, no. What it is is that you're. We don't go to as many shows before. 
uh, for those that don't know, uh, Chloe and I are best friends and we usually go to almost every single dubstep, Revelation, Epic Raves, uh, whatever show that comes here to Vegas. And we usually throw down and now it's kind of different with, you know, COVID going on. So even before then, like, I think I was like trying not to go broke going to all the shows. I remember, I remember you were going to La Broca or going to all these shows. <laughs> you had to yeah. go oh, cross country, you had to buy tickets, you had to do this. And for me, I'm just like, I'm glad California's right there. And I'm glad you got family. But I was just like, <laughs> I don't know if I, if I can hack it, girl. Um, and what's funny is like now I, ha- I, I get, I could. And of course, COVID-19 is going, you know? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's not going to be like this forever. Also, uh, we have more time to, to save. And I feel like we have better paying jobs compared to 10 years ago when we were just working at Sephora. And, you know, I like was still in school and wasn't able to work as much. And you, um, like, we're just fucking around. So, <laughs> well, and you were also like living by yourself and there was just so many different circumstances. I feel like now that we're older, that's a good part about, about getting older, like being an older raver is that you kind of have more of your shit stability. together. Yeah, definitely more stability. I mean, of course, this like, I'm not saying for everybody, but for the most part compared to... Did you only interview one person outside of me who was in their 30s? No, no, I don't want to say who, but, um, uh, we'll say she, this will narrow it down. She's a woman. I know this person personally. Uh, no, her, I, I it like took me a second to, to figure I love out what we're talking about. Someone's fucking age, but unfortunately it does matter. You see people, you see where there's a reason why I'm like, I'm looking at the fucking microphone like it is a camera, but you see, that's why bitches will be lying about their ages. Okay. Because you know, if, if it's, if it's like, uh, uh, controversial that someone is a certain age and you know, they, then there's a reason why I'm doing it. I don't know if I'm, if I said anything uh, coherent just now, I'm talking like an idiot. Um, no, 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 no. Lose sponsorships. If people think they're too old because then they'll think, Oh, they're not relatable. You know? And uh, while I don't have any sponsors, I don't do a goddamn thing. I never go on social media ever. Cause uh, that shit is uh, kind of depressing sometimes. And also, especially now, what 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 is anyone doing really i mean you went to florida that's cool you know i feel like you you out of everyone else has done the most uh no that is not that is not true in terms no, I, people i, I, I know personally go, yeah all i did was go on vacation that wasn't doing anything i feel like in terms of i don't know if you want to talk about like the rave community or in terms of people uh okay like b- basically a lot of what's been going on uh for example um, I Heart Raves, they came out with this um, really cool thing where they talk about mental health and basically promoted resources on where you can find um, But that's not doing something. Stuff like that. Talking about something isn't necessarily, or promoting something isn't well, do necessarily... You, mean, hold on. You, do, do, you, do, you leaving your house and venturing out somewhere else, like... Well, people that work do that. People that haven't stopped working that are. I haven't workers. stopped working, but I mean, I haven't. You're like, doing something. Not you're working. Game. You're working. You you technically did something. Yeah, but it's not. Uh, am I going to fucking post about this shit? Hey, everyone, I'm fucking. I got a job. All right. You could. A lot of people hey, are doing. Pay your it. traffic of- tickets. Shit. Hey. Hey, that's something. Come no, on. straight up. Oh, also, make sure something. that you guys have a car insurance. All right. Like if you guys, if your car insurance expired, you fucking get that shit. Okay. No joke. Are they like really cracking down here in Nevada? Cause I think for the longest time, because of. You want to know something interesting? Uh, in Florida, 29% of drivers are not insured. That's the highest in the country. Really? I wonder why. Is it because of income or. I have no idea. I thought I unlocked the door. Maybe he forgot. You're going to hear my boyfriend come in. It's fine. I'm a real person, people. Yes, Chloe's a real person. So, yeah, I don't care. Lauren knows about the podcast, right? Yeah, I told him. He got the text. 
Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about something interesting. We were talking about something real. We we're talking about what makes a real raver, okay? And let me tell you what makes a real raver. A raver who doesn't sell out. Oh, I'm just kidding. I have, I have no idea what that is. What is selling out? What I is selling like, out? What no, does that mean, Chloe? Off, real ravers sell out immediately. Fucking every raver, you, as soon as they can get a sponsor, they're like, yes, because like all they want, raving is so expensive. If someone could help you or give you some money to, to, to do it, 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 not only does it make you want to go further and deeper into it, but I, I feel like it's, I feel like it's part of the culture. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing too. A lot of ravers are young and a lot of young people tend to be broke and bitches be broke. So of course they're going to hop on any sponsorship, any promotion. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think a lot of people get a lot of hate for promoting too many brands or who gets of hate? First of all, fuck em. It's, fuck em. it's, it's a long story. It, it's just stupid promoter stuff, I guess. I, I mean, I never viewed it that way, but I guess there are certain people that do that think it's bad and conflict of interest. But unless I have a contract with you that says I will exclusively promote only for you, then I think that's different. But even then, I feel like if you have a contract that is that specific, I think, like, is it worth it? Like, because then you're not building yourself. I feel like you're almost closing a door. In I don't know. I, I mean, again, this is all subjective, but... Uh, yeah, who cares if ravers um, promote whatever? I promote so much shit. I'm not even going to lie. I promote so much stuff that I definitely have conflict of interest. But here's the thing. They still want what? to work with me. So I don't know how it's a conflict of interest. Basically, it's kind of like, let's say you were work, you're a vendor for, I don't know, like let's say Makeup Forever and you... You, you know what... No, don't even go go there, okay? Yeah, I think you, you know what I mean. just promote diarrhea tea, okay? I shot myself skinny so I could go to this fucking uh, music festival, okay? Uh, shut the fuck up. Uh, there's such a thing as a conflict of interest unless you are promoting diarrhea tea and you're promoting anti-constipation medication, you know? Because then your body, right. your body doesn't know what the fuck it's doing at this point. You're you're having drinking diarrhea tea. You're taking anti constipation medication. It's like, am I shitting or not? And um, but at the yeah. same time, I mean, that's for a corporation to corporation. Like like these people who are sponsoring people are Tide or Johnson Johnson or some big company. They're they're, they're tiny. They're tiny companies started by by people like you and I begging for anyone to notice them and sending free shit to people that they hope will allow people to want to have it. Okay. And then some angry jerk is going to be like, how dare you accept something? You know, right. you know what I like? I like gifts. I like when people give me gifts. Okay. And you know what? If, if, uh, if someone has decided to send me to, to gift me, you know, a box of, of, of tampons or a box of, um, toenail clippers, I'll say thank you for that, those toenail clippers. And I'll let everyone know how I feel about those toenail clippers and, or really, you did not, sorry, my boyfriend had to put his, the mail in front of me just now. Oh, you got me a cookie. Oh, that's so sweet. It's fine. But yeah, I feel I like you. it sounds really bad. Hi, Lauren. But it sounds really bad. Perfect. But uh, if it's free, it's me. And I'll take three. Yeah. And I mean, for you, okay, I think that's the other thing too, is that if a brand is willing to let me try it, um, I will most definitely promote it. When a brand is not willing to... Uh, send me a product and they want me to try it, it or want me to promote it, I feel like it's wrong and fucked up because I can't speak to the product. Um, same with working at Sephora. The reason we got um, what they call gratis, which is Spanish for uh, free, which is basically free makeup that we get to try out. is So that way we can talk to clients about it and really truly let them know what our experience was with it. I feel like if you don't try something and you're trying to promote it, it's like, how would you know? I almost feel like you're a liar. It's one thing to talk about their speaking points, but when you have tried it yourself, it's different. It's like, it's like calling yourself or saying that you like, um, I don't know, you like going to raves, but you've never been to one. It's like, how can you, how can you say that when the experience is not there? I feel like, well, what, two, two, uh, three points. Number one, your hair is super silky. Oh my gosh. I'm looking at your hair. It's like a Pantene Pro V commercial. I um, used Carol's daughter on it today. <laughs> they sell that at Target now, I think, right? 
Yeah, they do. It used to only be a Sephora. Sephora. Um, and then, so uh, there's, that, that, there's that, okay. Uh, number two, you were talking about um, people who haven't gone to raves but feel like they're a raver. That was me all through high school. <laughs> I never, I listened to EDM, as you know, Well, but okay, you I know there what? weren't any raves going on except for, oh, there's your cat. Oh, sorry. This is Tuco, everybody. Don't okay, ever apologize on behalf of that cat. That cat is a giant. He wants to make a guest appearance. Okay. So I, okay. I take that back. I guess that wasn't the best example. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that that wasn't an example. I'm just Cause, saying cause, that. Cause, no, cause I, you're right. I, People I, can I, uh, be ravers and not have ever been to a rave, but listen to rave music or EDM music. I don't know. Oh, I mean, like, I, I hate analogies music, like there this. There are people who are obsessed with Japan and uh, never been there. I think it would be like the same thing. Yeah. I ever just realized, music is oh my God, different. I'm a total airhead. What? You are an airhead. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. I love you. Chloe and I like to bash on each other all the time. So please no, don't she's think actually that we're mean. She's being mean. mean. She got me a cake. Other. She got me a cake that says happy birthday skink on my birthday. And it was spelled S-Q-U-A-N-Q-U-E. It was so cute. It was classy. It was very, it was classy. It was, very classy. It was, it was the classiest cake. Ever. It's my favorite cake to this day. I, I talk about when people, when people say, oh, um, Chloe, you're, uh, you're kind of a jerk. And I'll be like, yeah, but I, I'm a jerk to people who I love. And they go, you must love everyone because you're a jerk. No, but, um, no, it's but so I, true. I, I reference that cake. I say, my, my best friend and I, we give each other crap all the time and including, uh, in gift form or in dessert form. Yeah. Well, it's a very cute cake. And also I realized our friendship is, um, there's this comedian, Sebastian Mall. I can never say his last name, Mall and Sanko. Mall and Sanko. Anyways, he's, he's this super hilarious, uh, Italian, like New York city type comedian. And basically the way he was describing love, like how his family shows love is by breaking each other's balls. And like the more you break each other's balls, the more love you have for that person. I, and I realized our whole friendship throughout high school and now, I feel like now we're a little nicer to each other is just us being complete fucking dickheads and calling each other bitch and names and uh, um, don't nobody call her that yes okay bitch i see that cuff i see that cuff on your arm let's get into it what is what is that um i'm gonna be real with you half of these i have no idea when i got them i just know that uh they're mine forever can you tell our oh uh, listeners who are just listening, like, what kind of cuff this is? Can you, like, kind of describe and give them a visual? Uh, it's like a... Well, first off, I learned... Oh, hold it, hold it up to the camera, Chloe. Hold it up. Closer. Like, for, for... If someone's listening to this, all right, it, it'll be cruel for me to try and describe it to you because my uh, ability to uh, manipulate language, unfortunately, is lacking. Um... However, uh, I can tell you it looks maybe like little mountains on the side and it's, three, it's 3D and like the colors fucking matter to you. Like you actually give a fuck. You know what you give a fuck about? You give a fuck about the stuff that has that, 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 uh, that says shit, okay? All right, so this is one that I think is important and I bet you your ass made it because let me tell you something. She acts like, oh, she's nice. Oh, I care about the community. You know what the fuck this says? Basic, Okay. <laughs> Basic. B A S I C. I was sure like that's the one who made that shit. Are you sure? It might have been. I'm not sure. I remember we made a whole bunch of. Oh God, we used to make a lot of weird candy. Uh, asshole ones. I remember. I think you were talking to uh, someone on your podcast about people who give out like asshole. That yeah, was Sammy because we wanted. You. That's we it. wanted. Oh, I was listening to that and I'm like, this bitch is not even even know Renee. Renee. Renee was every bit that. What does this one say? This one says, uh, "Bone me." Okay, hold it up, hold it up so you can see. see. I don't know, Chloe. Maybe some some guy gave that to you and was really interested and gave that to you. It might have been from me. I don't know. I, how no, no, I don't know if you mean bone me, but uh, let's see. This one says nurse life. I wonder. I wonder how I, how I got nurse life. I know it sounds I don't like think that was from me. That I, I, I think that's just I from think, Timmy. 
Yeah, I think th- this one, I know you didn't make, and I, I, I'm i like, how did I get this? This seems like it was, should be for you. But by the way, a lot of the stuff that I got, so you made me this one, the sex robot. Oh, yeah, because your name. Most, most of this, the, the, uh, the candy Probably that the I have robot. are the ones that I don't want to trade because of, uh, I'm going to act like there's some sort of deep meaning to it. But because I find them entertaining, bone me's entertaining, basic is funny as fuck. Um, let me see, was it poop? This one just straight up says poop. That one's cute. That you one know, is cute. That one is very cute. And it looks like uh, a child made it with some of the stuff that's on there. You know, and, and that's what I like. I like the juxtaposition of uh, potty humor. And uh, you do have a potty mouth. Child like aesthetics. I think it's uh it's it's rather nice. Um this one uh is just flowers, you know, little daisies. Wait, 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 uh, bring pink. it back. Bring it, wait, Chloe, okay, so this one is a cuff and it's pink. It's on a giant cuff. It's about like an inch thick and it looks like uh the pink, the petals are pink and the middle is yellow. I like to describe stop, what this stop describing like. it because no, try- some people only listen, Chloe. Like they listen, yes, and they but don't like, get to watch like it. They're gonna care that much about the petals of color. What well, you know? What they care I about? Care. You know I what they care about? Know what what we're looking at? They care Other- about the feeling that I had when this was given to me, and it felt it felt like I was truly a raver. You know, I just felt, actually I have no idea. Um, because that's what makes it true flavor. No. Um, okay, let's see. This one says princess on here. I, this one I think was actually uh, given. Like I, I, tra- I traded. A lot, most of the candies that I get are... Um, Basic? Uh, sorry, no, no. Mo- well, yeah. No, most of the candies that I receive, I end up trading away. So if I kept it, it's usually because I, I like it. And I had never received... Uh, I very rarely did I receive anything big like a cuff or anything well, with a big. You, know, you have you have freaking two cuffs in your hand. Right? I know that's why I one kept on. Them. I didn't want to bring it any to any graves because I knew I'd end up giving it away. I remember I remember you were talking on one of your podcasts. This one just says beer on here. All right, uh, that's funny. You were talking on one of your podcasts to someone who she. Uh, this was said in a way that I thought was judgmental. Where there was someone who had this really amazing pearl or a really amazing... Um, a pearler? Candy, right? And this guy put all this time and effort into it. And then this, I guess a girl asked for it. And he said, I'll, it'll be $5. And then both your attitudes were kind of like down on him. I'm like, fuck no, bitch. You know how much time that fucking spent? He spent doing that? How much time and effort? And then you're just going to want it for free? Hi, I, you did all, you took all this time doing this. Give me this. That sense of entitlement? Are you fucking kidding me? No. That's, he did something that's good enough to be a business. If you truly support that person, you give that person some fucking money for that shit. And I would have been like, yeah. Or you know what? How about I buy you a drink? I don't have any cash on me or some shit, okay? Or just not ask for for it hey i really yeah, like your okay, purse maybe just can i have it for can it. i have your fucking purse no bitch you can't because i work for this fucking purse that's fucking ridiculous oh my god that made me so mad i was so on that guy's team like no charge for that shit someone really likes it if someone really likes what the fuck you do they'd be willing to fucking uh, buy it they'd be willing to put in effort hey well you know what? It that's why because that's what the fuck this. he did to make it Okay, but that's why candy businesses do exist. There are exactly. definitely companies and businesses that and have he's Etsy, his. Um, like Candy Bar. Well, I, he was not promoting his because he did not promote it at all. But who knows? Maybe he has his own business now. But he doesn't yeah. walk up to someone and be like, oh, that's cool. Can I have it? Right. That's the, Okay, that's fuck? the thing. That's, a, that's the thing. Is that I My that sandwich. Can I have it? I don't think it's exactly right to ask for it. But also... Okay, sure, I get it. Like you did put a lot of hard work into it. Um, I, 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 That's probably the most anti-plur so thing I ever said. Because if if the purpose of plur is to give away everything, I don't. Not everything. I, I don't think that I'm very plur. Then I feel like you're you not can show love. You know what I mean? You can show, uh, you know, unity and respect, but you don't have to expect something 
in return. You know what I mean? Or something back. Like, I feel like asking something for, from someone like that, asking for a material possession like that, I feel like was not giving the R part. I, I think like I was think, respecting him. I think with both parties, what was fucked up is that they were both expecting something. I think that's what was fucked up. I, and yes, you're right. I don't think, because like- I don't think he was so much effort. for the ask for some shit. Right, that's what I'm saying is that, okay, I guess- with candy, that's the thing is that a lot of people assume that it's free, but you can't always assume and you can't always expect to get it because there have been times where people trade me and I tell them, I can't trade you any. Like, these are all my, like, this is my don't trade arm. These are all the candies I receive. They're special. They're gifts. So I think what, the, like, the only thing was that both parties kind of expected something. I don't know. It's no, so black he, and white. He, I can't. He gave, she gave him a compliment and then she expected, uh, Something back. Like, I feel like you can give a compliment and not be like, oh, that's really amazing. Can I have it? Like, I would, I would say, I would ask, can I follow you? You know what I mean? I feel like that's different. I feel like she, I, th- I think he, his reaction was kind of, was a way for him to say no without saying no. Right. Well, either way. Can I ask the money? I mean, I feel like that's abrasive. I know just I a little bit, time. just a little abrasive, but whatever. But I have to say, I, I mean, just said no, or um, like, like really no, special. I worked really hard. <laughs> right. I don't know. Chloe, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Well, regardless, I found, again, these are the ones I just refused. I think to I made that. It says besticle. Yeah. No one else uses that word. I think I only use it with you. I've heard it like one other time with someone else. And I, I, out. I don't know why I love, actually, I do know exactly why I love cat. This one I received and I never wanted to trade it. Cactus? The cactus. The reason why is the color scheme. Okay. They have, they have two different types of green. Okay. And then they have the pink for like the cactus flower. And then this is cactus. And I just, I'm a sucker for that type of stuff. Shut up. I'm not sentimental. I'm hardcore. You're very hardcore. But also stuff like that is cute. I feel like the candies with the theme like that goes with whatever it says, it's super cute. I think I made one that says look up and it was like, I made it cloud themed. So it was like blue and white and it looks more special. And you could tell like people really, or or, like you could tell that person like really thought about what they were making. I don't know. Themed candies like that, I think are super cute. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. What are you doing? What's nothing. In your hand? Nothing. Is that some candy? Hand. Nothing's in my hand. You're trying not, to eat more walnuts? Surprise. No. I Chloe, know. show us. You know we're no. recording, right? I'm not editing this out. No, I'm trying, I'm trying to... Chloe, what the hell is that? No, you're going to see later. You okay? can't expect me to not acknowledge what you're doing. Are you on your phone? I, no, it's not my phone. My phone's over there. What are you doing? Fine. Okay, I found my glove. Remember when that, like, for five minutes I wanted to oh do a glove? I'm trying to turn it on. Oh, God. Yeah, we were so young back then and had dreams and dreams. Chloe wanted to be a flow artist, everyone. She wanted to, or not a flow artist, a glover. And dude, glove shows are the best. They are the best. I still. There you go. Really That's like how them. you have to turn it on like that. Okay. God damn. How old is that thing? Isn't that like old ass glove? They're really like falling apart and I never used them. That's the weird part. I'm like, how the fuck is this thing? You want to hear something funny? Timmy has gloves too. <laughs> And he doesn't use it either. I think you guys both have yeah. gl- the only glovers or wannabe glovers that I know that like haven't actually practiced and mastered it. Not once did I practice. I was like, yeah, my sister, by the time I, I would have been good, my sister would have been too old. Anyways, yeah, now I know how to, you got to pull the thing back. Hey, it's not too late to learn though. Never too late for now. No, no one watches Sturdy Rock. I'm sorry. Well, I did. Not anymore. Dude, do you hear about um, Alec Baldwin's wife? I don't give a fuck if she's pretending to be... Hilaria Baldwin, whatever. That's hilarious. No, uh, no, but I... Who... I couldn't, I couldn't give a shit. Uh, I feel like... Off, who pays attention to her anyway? Like, shame on you, anyone, for giving a fuck about some motherfucker's wife. Like, what is she doing? What does she do? You know, Alec Baldwin, pay attention to. He's an actor. He does something. What the fuck does she do outside of bang him? I don't know, but uh, Tim Dillon 
Tim Dillon was basically saying it's technically a compliment. She wants to pretend that she is. Uh, it, it, first off, wait, 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 wait. Like she let's, wasn't, actually, let, let's go, let's go deeper. Let's go. Rachel Dole is all. All right. She is like, she, that's basically what she did, but with like, so trying to be Spanish. At, so good at gloving. Renee, look at this. Look at this. Wait, you have to do that, that, that thing where they wave their gloves. Like they do that. No, you know what it was? We were gonna do. We were gonna be assholes. We were going to do like the world's worst glove show, and then at the end, do this. Have our hand out for some money. Five dollars, please. Five dollars, please. We would've been that guy. We'd have been the guy with the with the five dollar who said a uh, <laughs> who said we five dollars for the perler, except it would've been for the world's worst. <laughs> yeah, we used to have all these whack ass ideas, like giving people we light shows and charging for them. I mean, I mean, you're talking to me, a jerk, but um, yeah, like uh, I feel like as far as, as faking a, a, an ethnicity, um, to me personally, um, God, you're it's fucking weird. But with Rachel Dolezal, I felt like, yeah, she about, about damn time. You know, that's why she's acknowledging that I look good. That's what she yeah. does. All this all. Yeah, fake it. I, honestly, I, I didn't really see the big deal of Rachel Dole's I thought she was just some crazy lady. Um, yeah, she yeah. definitely had some issues, but she, at least she was, like, fighting for exactly. she was a fighting good for, cause, you yeah. know? She's, she did a lot more for Black people than I certainly have. I, I just exist as a Black person. Right, and, uh, I mean, in the end, I don't think it's really hurting anybody. Not, no, no, and, what it was was, I think, okay, so... I saw, people just don't like to be catfished, I guess. I saw a part of a documentary that apparently she was pretending to have had um, a like the KKK or some shit after her, like have, getting threats. Rachel Dolezal? Yes. And that's how any, uh, light of, any of this came to light because no one was making threats. And I think for some people, they, they like want to be victimized like they think that well, a, there's sociopaths know that there's power in being a victim sometimes, and they also know that's a great way to get attention. So she, like, apparently faked these uh, threats against her and said that it was because she was a black woman. So that's not good. But had she never done that, who gives a shit? Right. Well. Yeah. I- I mean, yeah, she lost her job, so her ability to take care of her son was com- completely compromised, you know? So I look at it like that. Her parents sold her out and were like, no, she's white. But her parents were mad because she, I guess, had got custody of her younger brother, their kid. Um, but, uh, yeah. But her parents... Faking, faking threats aren't good. Um, I was going to say, that's very Jesse uh, Smollett. But Jesse Small, exactly. Smollett, yeah, which is not cool. But you know what is cool? My my light show ability. Look at that. Oh my God, I am so good at this. Remember when you first got him, you were doing this. You were like <laughs> <laughs> playing patty cake. God, I'm going to get you canceled. I bet you anything, this conversation, because we're talking about race or something, people are going to be No, like, I... I disagree with this, with this, and I don't like this nuance. So I'm going to fucking find this person and then be obsessed with them and, and shit. You know, that was kind of my fear at first, like getting canceled and whatever the fuck getting called out. But I feel like, well, first of all, cancel culture is fucking stupid. And second, uh, the thing is people um, make mistakes and they can change their minds. I mean, of course... I feel like cancel culture is appropriate in terms of someone that like if someone was a fucking abuser and I don't know, fucking was like molesting children and doing all these horrible things. Um, I like, yes, you, your ass deserves to be called out. I'm sorry, but I feel like, actually I'm not well, sorry they because that shit's fucked up. They think it's, it's call out culture. They're like, well, we should never call anyone out then. And no, I feel like calling someone out, well, A, sometimes something is just an opinion. You can't call someone out. Me not thinking Rachel Dole's always that big of a deal, except for the whole, uh, you know. There are people that think that you can get called thing. out or canceled for that because you should be angry and upset because. I didn't know her personally. I don't care. 
Right. But no, what I'm saying is that there are people that are like, you're black. You should care. That shit was fucked up. She's pretending to be one of us. And that was horrible. But I feel like, but she did so many good things for black people that it's like, I, like, I don't think it's bad. Like she was, they're going to say, well, good things. What is this girl who's Asian going to say anything about the black experience? They're going to say that. I bet you. But, um, my fee, my feeling is, uh, uh it's so stupid i feel like it's so stupid people can just I feel, like, I feel like trying to look like me only makes me feel good because it lets me know i'm doing something right right and i think in the end it's a compliment i feel like it is actually for me it is a huge back in the back in the day they did everything to not look like uh me you know what i mean so i don't i don't care she she can go ahead and do that i can, i'm gonna go ahead and not care I, I knew who I really feel bad for is her son. Her son is just like, like she really loves the attention. You can tell no matter what she loves it. If you watch the documentary, but her son, I didn't know there's a documentary. He's on Netflix or yeah, it's on Netflix. Her son, what is it called? Uh, the Rachel divide. Mm, okay. I'm going to have to check that out. Her son is just like, I just, I just want to live, dude. I didn't ask for any of this. <laughs> how he feels and um oh god yeah i feel bad for that kid um yeah yeah in the end because he didn't fucking do anything it was his you did something up, uh, very interesting though because the rave community has had a, a couple of big cancellations we're talking about Dasik. and he and oh uh oh uh space jesus Oh, actually, I didn't know about that one. I was thinking about a uh, fucking um, midnight tea. No, nails. Uh, uh, oh my god, no! I, you're, these are all new to me. I'm thinking of uh, why can I think of his name? He was like the defining part of our first CDC. Oh, uh, base necker. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know why I can even. I was like base, base, base yes. thing. I know. I I feel like there may be a large segment that never ever wants them to come back. But I feel like, I mean, well, Datsik, it doesn't seem like he at all recognized what, I guess, was wrong if the underage stuff is true, you know? Well, also, but, and I say that because of that song Cancelled, you know? I feel like it's also very trendy to hate cancel culture, you know? And... Uh, I think he was. I think it's trendy. It doesn't seem that he. There's. There are definitely people who make a big name for themselves being anti-cancel, and uh, and what really what it is is they're just they just don't like that anyone says anything about certain things. Like I get it's super irritating that everyone wants to go and and complain about absolutely everything, but at the same time. Um, well, even stuff that was like, for example, uh, 10 years ago where um, things were um, completely different and in context, like it was okay then, like certain oh, yeah. things you wouldn't do now. So of like course. that song, um, that song, um, uh, why can I think of the name, that Christmas song uh, that's kind of rapey, <laughs> uh, Walking in a Winter Wonderland, that song is about rape. I'm just kidding. No, um, it's the one is where- Is it? I don't even, maybe I don't remember the song. lyrics. All right. This baby is cold outside, right? People were trying to cancel that song, maybe roll my eyes, whatever. But then, then people who were upset that their that song is about to get canceled went in the other direction too far. They like played that song for a week straight on the radio and shit. And I'm like, that's too much, okay? That's too. You, you can just still like listen to that song. I'm gonna keep these gloves on the whole fucking time. You can still, you know, like that song. Maybe you'll get a sponsor from a sponsorship from Glow Effects. No one is going to sponsor me if you put any of this conversation up. It's going to be this whole conversation. Stop is canceled. She is calling out. She's trying to call out call out culture. Okay, she's not. She's okay with people appropriating other cultures. How would she like it if we appropriate Filipino culture? Okay, how would she? You know what? You know that's what's going to happen. You it's freaking gonna- sound like EDM Twitter, which is a thing. EDM Twitter is totally. Oh, no, no, it's just, I, or I think it's just Twitter in general, really. Microcosm is just the most extreme of those 
Wait, what'd you say? True. Any, any Twitter microcosm is What's just a microcosm? Uh, uh, world, it's my tiny world. Cause there's, there's, there's black Twitter, there's conservative Twitter, there's, you know, Asian Twitter, Latino Twitter, uh, you know, beer drinkers, Twitter, bakers, all that stuff. Right. And for EDM Twitter, the people who are most active on there are going to be people who are the most extreme and they, they consume it the most and, and the most rabid, you know? So, uh, and a lot of the times, essentially, they'll be so rabid that only the most, the ones who agree with each other would be left. And then they're kind of around saying who can and can't say something. So, uh, because they're the ones who make the rules now, they kind of kick, they kind of alienate other people out of that space. That's what happens a lot on Reddit. That happens a lot on so many different platforms where, you know, it could be a platform about Hello Kitty, but, you know, it, it, the platform will quickly be, be taken over by people who, you know, have such strong Hello Kitty, uh, uh, like a, beliefs or ideologies. Yeah. That the, it, it'll, it'll get to, you know, anti-Bats Maru techno, uh, technology territory. <laughs> Anti-Bats Maru. Anti-Bats Maru technology. I really love Bats Maru. Bats Maru is very cute. But, um, yeah, I feel like people, that, a lot of people that are on Twitter that are like Twitter cutthroats, like diehards, I feel like a lot of them uh, contribute to the whole uh, cancel culture um, because a lot of it definitely stems from there. Uh, for example, like Chris D'Elia, but I, oh God, I feel like just for that reason, that's why I'm not as active on Twitter. That is literally t- why I'm not active at all. Now, my boyfriend would say, Chloe, you read Twitter all the time. Yeah, I, I don't post anything. I, I only look at like maybe a couple of people. I was like an author, you know what I mean? One, I don't two, even think you follow me on Twitter. I don't even think I have you on Twitter, which I, need I don't. To I'm do. not even signed in. I actually, I should probably uh, sign in and add you because I, 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 when I go on it, I don't go on the app. I go on the website on the phone. Oh, you do it the yeah. hard way. Why don't you just get the app? I have the app. I still feel like signing into it. I don't. It's not that hard. Well, anyways. I know. I don't. I just don't care. Yeah. I feel like Twitter, it's basically a whole bunch of uh, drama and people's thoughts on certain things. For me, it's usually 4 a.m. thoughts, 4 a.m. delusional thoughts. And basically me just uh, talking about random shit or what I want or literally just whatever update is in my head. I feel like it's Facebook without, without all the extra shit almost. How do you think we'd be able to, and I say we, I mean society, rave society specific. Let's, let's, let's get into the specific of raves. How do you think we could, um, calm that part of, of rave culture down? You can't. You can't. That's just part of it. It's. it's well, really I mean, I ask this because you know, what if I, uh, you know, time goes by, and Dad's sick. You know, really, do, like, is there any way for him to repent, show that he's recovered, and ever, you know, bring? I don't Joel think so. Through his music, I feel like that's unfair, though, because there are people who used to be neo Nazis, right, and now they're no longer neo Nazis. Should people still treat them like they're Nazis? Here's the thing. I don't know because I, okay, I for one, you know this, I don't trust a lot of people. And when somebody breaks that trust, I don't fucking trust you ever again. Like I'll forgive you, but but I won't forget. I feel like the victims, right? The only people who, 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 I, I mean, I obviously, the victims are, are, are the ones who, who I would say would be the only judge, in my opinion, I guess. Like, if, if the victims feel like, okay, you know what, maybe I feel comfortable this person's learned the lesson or whatever, they could, people could maybe, it sounds bad when I say allow for that person to make music again, but... I mean, well, I already know that he, like the rave scene is not letting that happen because I think he actually dropped some new music and a lot of people are like, you know, besides his like die hard, like Troy never did anything wrong. Like that's sick forever. Uh, we believe you, man. Like those girls are lying. Like those fans, I feel like 
the majority of people in the EDM community are not having it. And I think one of the reasons they're so against him still, um, and rightfully so, I think, is because he came out with this whack-ass apology where he was like, hey, fam, um, basically, I don't remember it verbatim, but he was just saying something about how, he, like, um, he's just doing him, it's the vibes. And I think, I, I want to say that he was like denying it. And it it was just, it was just the shittiest, most like unthought, like unsincere, like not genuine at all, like apology. It was You just, can tell when someone's just trying to be like, calm down y'all. Uh, but if, but if yeah. someone was genuine, you know, if someone did something wrong, right? And then they genuinely not only felt bad, but wanted to make things better. Is Could there possibly be a way for them to show how they want to make things better, them actually like do that? And maybe if he started like a charity going to like sexual assault victims and a lot of like, maybe, I don't know if the majority of his proceeds went to that, then yeah, maybe I'd feel a little bit of... Okay. Uh, a little bit more well, I, forgiving. I like that song canceled to me. Let me feel like he didn't. Let yeah. Him, well, let me, let the me. thing is, this doesn't apply to everything. It's because of how, like, the severity of what he did. It's like so fucked up, you know? It's like, how can, like, you, in order to be forgiven for something that big and be accepted again and want people, have people support you again, people that loved you, I, I feel like you have to you have to make really big steps that include sacrificing stuff that benefits you like your proceeds. I don't know. It, it's so black and white or not black and white. It's so gray. It's not black and white. I can't. And that's, that's the, 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 the one, that's the that's one bad part of it. Cause it's just sort of like, you know, I, I always feel like there should be space for someone to grow and learn from their mistakes. And, and sometimes people will do horrifying things. And yeah, uh, it's, it's they, kind of like, they, they, they learn from them, you know? And I feel like, I feel like if ravers, you know, uh, where we like to be plur and if someone does something that is definitely not plur like that, um, over and over and over again to other ravers, uh, like other people of our family, like that, that is our family. Um, it, I don't know. It's there's nothing wrong with kicking that person out, but at the same time, uh, they should definitely allow for that person to grow it. But I think that we, as a, as a community need to figure out what that growth has to look like, how they have to show it. Cause it can't just be, I gave this much money away, blah, blah, blah. You know, because sometimes people can do that. I just did this. Okay. Now can I have my thing back? You know, right, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, <sighs> It's so hard, but I don't know, maybe prove that you're going to therapy, like making another apology that is way more sincere. I don't know. The thing is, because I don't trust a lot of people, it's like, how do I know this is even real? How do I know this is genuine? But, how, but is it us that needs to, well, obviously the audience, someone gets a career back if the audience wants them. So if no one's wanting him back, if then uh, it's clearly, uh it's it's there's nothing he can do you know because i think uh, he's dead i think his career is over okay who you know he's not doing any movies right now but if he said decides to do a show it's sold out you know so if his music was that popping okay but if that happened people would still be secretly fucking with him but he wouldn't be able to really make money off of it necessarily unless it was like some weird only fans or some shit you know? Yeah, but there's a difference between a comedian that got caught jacking off all on the phone with somebody compared to someone who he was, was not jacking off on the phone with someone. He was preventing these girl ladies from leaving the room, and then oh, lying. I didn't hear about that. Oh yeah, yeah, he was lying and saying that he wasn't. Not only was he saying that he wasn't doing that, but that they were liars. Like he was making it so that they were having a difficult time booking shows, you know, and mm. uh, negative okay, well, their careers. But I think that the, his ability to have a show or his ability to have a career is between him and those ladies. If those women personally forgive him and, or he pr helps promote those specific women, you know what I mean? Because if they're claiming that they were not able, were not able to get gigs, they were, uh, 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 being prevented to from furthering their comedic career, um, then it would be uh, it would be he should try to reverse that. 
if you, but that's me. right. That'd be my atonement, but, or sorry, that'd be his atonement in my opinion would be he negatively affected their ability to get a career. So therefore he has to promote them and, uh, and help them kind of help, help them out of that hole. Right. Yeah, I think, think it would be good, but when it comes to sexual assault, how to, you can't reverse that. There's no way. No, 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 no. But of course that trauma, that's what you'd have to get, uh, you know, the law, but let's put it, if someone did something serious, right. Like uh, sexual assault, they went through the, the, the court, the legal system and the court system. After they go through that, I still, after they go through that, let's say they get punished or, or what have you, they should be able to show atonement and in a personal way, and then maybe start over. Okay. So for example, with Bill Cosby, like for me, I can't think of anything that he could really do. He's old as fuck at this point. He could just sit back for the rest of his life. But for him, what he would have to do, uh, well, each each and every situation was different. But I mean, he would he went to jail, right? He was convicted. Yeah, right? He's in jail. Then he's being punished afterwards. If he you know manages to survive after going to jail, then I think. He, he was he was punished. We should we can stop. You know what I mean. But do you think that people should still continue supporting him as a comedian, as a, a like an iconic actor, like pioneer? I'm not going to tell whether people should or shouldn't do that because yeah. it's to me it, it's up to them. If you uh, if you want to go and pay to see him after he comes out, I don't think that there's no people should. Uh, I'm going to say shame them, but let's put it this way. Um, bass drop, uh, bass drop princess. Uh, what about speaker, me? You know, I can still listen to his music. There's just an asterisk in my head. Yeah. Yeah. I still have a whole bunch of songs like by him or that I liked on my Spotify playlist. Like when he comes on, I don't, like I don't fast forward or I'm not going to go and delete something. any of the videos that I posted, you know, of us having fun in California, blasting his music, you know, because yeah, same thing with same thing with that. I still have no, a whole bunch of songs that I love. No, ma- first off, let me tell you something. That sick. Were we ugly? Because guess what? Y'all we met that sick. He, he took pictures with us. He was super nice. He was super nice. Yeah, that's what, and I just that feel like I'm not attractive enough for him to, no, we're not. We're not like, I really, I did my makeup all nice. Like, I was, like, so happy. And then to know that, like, I was not. <sighs> I'm just kidding. Dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you canceled. I am going to get you so fucking canceled. No, you're not. You're, and you're I, not I, taking I, sexual assault seriously. That's what they're going to say. You did, do it. Edit that the shit out. Edit that the fuck out. No, I'm not going to edit it because I feel like people understand that you're joking. And people they, don't understand nuance at all. Yeah, but here, cool. Fuck, fuck it. Fuck, fuck these people. It, this is not going to be edited. This is supposed to be completely raw, unedited. I'm going to start uh, eating Pop Rocks on here the whole time. Every time I say something controversial. I will fucking murder you, Chloe. Do not do that. Pop Rocks my mouth the whole time. But yeah, I, I think that for the most part, you know, I was so worried about worst candy ever, like people hating it, people wanting to cancel me because I was doing something not plur, bashing on people's candies. But um, I... Well, you want to know what want me to bash on someone's candy? Let me tell you... Some fucking bitch gave me one that said basic. All right. And then another one, another one that, that just was me. And I don't know who Chloe. gave you that, Chloe. That was some bitch. fucked up shit. Because you are not basic. I don't know who gave you that, but that was messed up. You are the far from basic. You are sophisticated and complicated. But yeah, I, I was super scared of uh, worst candy ever. And I made sure to say, this is out of love. This is coming from a place no, of love. This no, no. Oh, God. Like, don't. Like, but I feel people like have said shit. And I feel like if people know me enough and they'll have- They'll know you're a bitch. Yeah, they're going to know that I'm a bitch. They're going to know that I we have a fucking sense of humor and that we love comedy and we really don't mean any of the uh, uh, the fucked up shit that we mean. But- you know what? Whatever. This is a great light show. Chloe's still giving me a trying to be an amateur glover. The only thing I, I'm, I'm happy about is that literally no one knows who I am. They're gonna know who you are now. Well, also a lot of them have seen me with you. Yeah, but like they're gonna care. I don't know. People are nice and they'll say hi. I don't know if 
Who cares? Yeah. I still had you on my show because you're my best friend. You're one of my best friends. And we've been- gonna have, They're so going to make you stop being my best friend. They're going to be like, you're going to have to be like, I never knew that girl. You know, I think she got me water one time at a rave or something. I don't fucking know her. Don't I'm know. not going to say that. And we'll be like, yeah, she gave me a piece of candy and left. We had traded. It was nice. Yeah, that was, be- that was basically it. You know, she- mm. Oh, anyways, what else would you say- Makes you a real raver, quote unquote. <laughs> Let's get back to the quote unquote. Yeah, you only went back all the way to the beginning. What, what was the one thing? What, what was the first thing you said? I don't even remember. That's God. how unrelevant this is. But I think all you have to to be a real raver, I think you just need to listen to EDM music. I think that's the main takeaway. My mom's a real raver. She listens to EDM. And that means my boyfriend's a raver because he listens to EDM. And then... um, But then I feel like raver means like... I feel like there's a little bit more to it. Because it's kind of like calling... You uh, participate in the culture, which would be giving away candy, um, which would be... uh, Believing in the mantra, believing in plur, believing in peace, love, unity, respect. um, I, uh, gosh, because I feel like you, you don't have to have any sort of skill to be a raver, but I feel like that gives you raver points. Maybe there should be like a raver point system. Yeah, yeah, like if you're a shuffler or a Maybe we should, or a we should actually do that. We should actually have like a chart, okay, for raver point system. And then we'll see how many points for what, like, you know, uh, of course, how many shows you got to, but how many massive shows, how many tiny shows, because those matter too. You know what I mean? Yeah, then we should start we should start judging and tallying up points for every single raver account that we come across and just compare them all to each other. And think, wait, didn't we have like raver bingo or some shit? Like, cause it, no, that was on Instagram a while back. No, like, no, it was, it was EDC. No, every, every EDC we saw the Daisy bras, right. You would see like some totem of like something sexual, like, you know, uh, like a, a sex plant. Yeah. Um, it was like, uh, you would see, uh, like a, a bunch of guys in like tactical backpacks and stuff, like really growing out. Um, God, they're, they're, we had a whole bunch of these like memes, but only between each other that if you go to raves, you've seen these a million times, like the girl crying out the ba- outside the bathroom who lost her phone or some shit, you know? Yeah, on Instagram, they they had like bingo cards really similar to that. It was like raver bingo. Um, it it kind of hit the nail on the head, but there was other stuff like, um, you know, you're a real raver when you made, you, you have your own raver uh, or flower bra. You made your own flower bra. You, I'm not a real raver. I, I'm, I'm not a real raver because um, I never could wear a bra uh, in public. I'm sorry, but this, I keep smelling this cookie. My boyfriend got me a cookie because he's full of love. And uh, oh my god, is this take that away from the rapper Chloe? It's gonna sound like shit. Thank you. Oh god. Mm. Anyways, uh, yeah. I, um, again, like with what make it like what makes you a real raver, quote unquote. It's just honestly just listening to the music, I think, and being uh, like having the plur values. I think that's really it. Everything what that makes we said a was a joke. A poser. Yeah. What do you think makes someone a poser, Raver, Chloe? I feel like out of both of us, I'd probably be the poser. I don't have no, a No, you're not a poser. You're just I don't give a fuck. old and not in the loop. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, you have shit going on. We both have shit going on. Um, sorry, I, whenever I think like hmm. a poser. A poser is a guy... Who goes to shows just to see the girls? Oh, yeah, I, I consider that like kind of like a bandwagon fan, like somebody. But, who I mean, goes the guy to, is about the music, you know? Yeah, like, it's kind of like I, people I that people, we've run into people like this, right? Or I feel like it's people that go to raves just to get fucked up, just to do drugs, just to sell drugs, just to do drugs at home. I don't know why they got to go to rave to do. They can save a whole lot of money doing it right at home. Yeah, I have no idea why they would do that. Go to raves and do that there. You want to lose your keys and your cell phone and your friends and your money? Right, or get caught by um, a freaking narc. 
Yeah. I mean, which is very possible, which is highly possible because I do know several people that have been caught at a rave. So they definitely, yeah, they definitely exist and is totally a thing. Remember at EDC a couple years ago when there was those Canadian dudes who asked us where they can find uh, Somali and we're like, we don't, we don't have names, sorry, we don't do that. And then they're like, they're, they're like, oh my God, you, you think we'd be able to find Somali at EDC, but we can't? Like, it's the worst Canadian accent, but I, it was the funniest thing. I was yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah, bandwagon fans or... I don't know. I feel like if you need to have that, then you are there for the wrong reason. I mean, again, that's like a whole nother topic. You can do whatever you want with your sobriety. But uh, yeah, assuming that you can just find it wherever, that it's all over um, a rave uh, yeah. is just so stupid. Oh, I, ha- I hate that stereotype that raves are just full of drugs. It's like, have you? what do you think Coachella is? All right. Do you think people do that every other- Photo place? shoot. It is definitely fun. First off, life is beautiful as a photo shoot. That's literally. That's what made it so beautiful. And that's why our pictures look so beautiful and fun. <laughs> I'm beautiful. That life is beautiful. Dude, do you remember when we uh, yes. won that Dove contest chocolate? Yeah. yeah so. Uh, I, still, I still fuck with Dove. I fuck with Dove chocolate just for that reason. So basically, uh, about four years ago, Chloe and I got single one-day tickets to Life is Beautiful here in Vegas. And it was on Saturday. And we actually... Hey, we met that guy. Yep. Frontliner. He's a good hard style DJ. Anyways, we... There was a Dove chocolate booth at Life is Beautiful. And basically, you had... In order to enter their contest, you all you have to do is like take a picture of yourself and hashtag Dove Chocolate or some something like that. And we did it, and I think we were like one of the only people that entered, and we ended up winning a one day Sunday VIP uh, wristband each of us. So we ended up being able to go on Sunday, which was super cool. I think that was my first time going VIP. Yeah, anywhere, and it changed my life. Yeah, the bathrooms uh, uh, in and of itself are amazing. And of course, the first time I was going to go you know, VIP to EDC, it um, imploded, or the, the entire country imploded. Hey, but we still have our VIP tickets for yeah. this year, if it <sighs> happens. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Right. So there are two types of posers, I guess, the people who go to concerts just to see the girls. And I guess maybe, I guess maybe there's only one. So I can't, it's hard for me to think of a girl poser. Maybe a girl, actually no, a girl poser is someone who doesn't listen to the music at all, but goes to, to the shows to take pictures. Yeah. Basically, if you don't listen to the music, if you don't really like the music, I guess that's what you can say a yeah, poser is. What it is. It's someone who goes there and doesn't really like the music. Yeah, because back in high school, um, like I was super big metal head, you know that. Uh, I remember certain people saying, oh yeah, like he's not a metal head or oh yeah, that kid's not a skater because... Their litmus test was such bullshit because it was bullshit. always their own personal definition. Yeah, but it was like, oh, because you don't listen to Iron Maiden, you're not a real metal head or oh, because you don't like Slayer, you're not a real metal head. But there's so many different genres of metal that you can't just say that. Yeah, like that's so broad. It's not that um, cookie cutter. Are there fake bass heads? The thing is, bass music is such a broad term because that can mean like dubstep, drum and bass, uh, like rhythm. There, there's like even um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, side trance. Like, there's so many different like different genres so, like- of bass music. It would be like I, I imagine someone who is a very uh into defining what is and isn't something, right? Which we're doing right now. But um Yeah, what a poser is. Uh I know, but I, I imagine they would say something like, um, if your favorite DJ is Dead Mouse, you're not you can't call yourself a bass head or something like that. You know what I mean? Like they would have some lit what litmus test like that. 
Oh, okay. Okay, this would be like the stupidest one. It would be like you're not a real, you're not a real uh, dubstep fan if you don't like excision. But then again, that that's just like a BS. I will like, say that it's very difficult to like dubstep and not, and not like, like excision. I know. That's why that's why I'm saying it's the majority of people love him. And of I course, can't. I literally am trying to think of how that's possible because he so a different owns the genre. That's. He has a freaking music festival dedicated just to dubstep and dinosaurs. So yeah, it's kind of yeah. I, I mean, like God, God, you can't. It's not possible, man. I'd like to meet the. You should meet. Try to ask. Is there anyone who loves dubstep but hates excision? And then, no, don't invite him on your show. I just want to see if that person exists. It'd be like how. It'd be like I don't like excision because he fucked my girlfriend. Okay, maybe that's why I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then again, there's so many like different excision like songs and styles and his like oh my god like it's bass cannon so that sounds well, how he was back in the day. Yeah, completely different. Like like oh my gosh. Well the the whole dubstep sound just changed. But there I'm sure there are people that uh bass heads or headbangers or um not headbangers, bass heads or people into dubstep that don't like excision. I'm sure they exist because they only like a certain type of genre like they only like melodic dubstep so they don't really like what it. i don't think i've ever heard of that i'm some people to- only like elenium seven lions oh, oh seven lion. vibe okay oh i think there there was one thing that if you're at a seven line show like i always make fun of the fact that he he's obsessed with women alone in the wilderness doing yoga with that little sims diamond thing all of his light uh his visuals were like that for the longest oh, some, time until he changed some, it like floating geometrical uh sims uh, diamond oh. it's a freaking sims diamond yeah and then and then there's a woman and then she's like she's always running like she's really slow she's like run, running and but there's but she's always alone in the wilderness so you may not know this but uh and it doesn't matter if it's a desert uh there's snow a uh, well, yeah, forest you know underwater in space she's fucking alone um <clears throat> there is um on oh, yeah. netflix Every person has their own, uh, I guess, category they put you in. And then they'll tailor the thumbnails to you based oh, off of it's, what it's they It's their see. algorithm. Their algorithm. Yeah. What I'm wondering is, because there are people who have uh, the, the thumbnails. This one author was saying that all the thumbnails look, are women alone that look like maybe they're dead or scared. I bet you he has that. I bet you he has the sets. That's, that's what his Netflix looks like. Yes, a hundred percent. Because all his visuals are that you they know? all look like the, the that Jeffrey Epstein documentary. Is that well, all of his? I have not seen that documentary. Basically, it's a girl in front of like this large, rich ass looking gate to some fancy neighborhood or something. At least that's the one that's on my. Um, I you know. I, I had Netflix. Netflix knows not to uh, show me such documentaries. I'm like, they'll show me a thousand baking ones, you know, or anything that has to do with food, uh, or like they'll show me gross people laughing. Oh yeah, mine's like all stand up and uh random cooking shows. I wonder why we're friends. <laughs> it's all like comedies and, and cooking and food. Yeah, both of us. Oh also I think my Netflix thinks that I'm a drag queen and I'm gay. So my Netflix is correct. Yeah, they yeah, these damn algorithms, they definitely know. Because um yeah, I watched a lot of gay watched a lot of gay stuff. This is true. Literally act like like literally gay, uh like actual gay movies and and and, and stuff. They they they're they're like, okay, she likes he she she likes that, and you know, we're gonna show a lot of that. And I'm like, great. Um Well it works out. I'm glad I was able to finally separate it from my dad's though, because they would have been very confused. I think when we were he and I were sharing it, I've been like, what the hell this person likes uh likes all these cooking shows these uh documentaries and then uh and uh, comedies but then they also love you know watching a murder mystery and and uh, action anime <laughs> well they probably realize that you guys are sharing account because yeah. i am currently i just used the hell out of timmy's account so timmy has all this freaking anime and these random yeah. random things that he watches all these shows i don't really like and then justin and i will watch some documentary or uh usually just a fuck ton of stand-up or um the great american barbecue showdown 
which I really liked. It was you really know, good. I, this, I, I, I should probably watch that. I cook enough meat. It was really good. I bought so good. bacon the other day. It actually tastes really good. It tastes like bacon, but yeah. You bought what bacon? Beef bacon, like bacon made from cows. It's halal. Oh, that sounds good. I'll have to try it. Yeah, it actually is very good. Um, I like to get halal meats when I can because, this is just a theory, because they drain the blood, I feel like it has, the weight is more meat and not necessarily like extra blood, you know, like you're not going to get it liquid. And also that when it, when you, after you cook it and absorbs the liquid back, it's going to absorb more of the fat back in. <laughs> Whatever. I found, I, I've had some really, really great uh, halal meats and now I just like to buy halal when I can. Yeah, no, I, I definitely like the halal option um, because they do kill the animal like humanely. Like I didn't know that they pray for it and that they like make the animal it's face like, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that they, um, they basically try to kill the animal in the quickest way possible with dignity. So I, uh, I definitely like that a lot, but we're gonna get canceled because we eat meat. No, um, <laughs> no, yeah. uh, that, that's not definitely not something that people would cancel. No. All right, bitch. So, I uh, stop recording now. Well, we're almost at an hour and a half, so this was more than enough and more than perfect. I'm sure my boyfriend's hungry. I have to turn back the sous vide machine on so we can have ribs. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, thank you again for being on the show, Chloe. I freaking love you. Again, this was the People's Chloe, a.k.a. my best friend of almost half my life. Yes, thank you for having me on. Um, I'm hoping I don't get you in trouble for anything that I say. Um, if you Not going to get in trouble. You are going to get in such huge trouble. They're going to start a campaign against you because... They're going to love you. Watch. I have oh, people, I have no, because we're both, you. we're both pro... What was it? Um... Is there uh, anything you want to promote, by the way? I don't know if you want to promote your Instagram or if you're on I don't. TikTok I never or... on Instagram. Like, I never, I never do any. I'll, I'll, I'll have you pin me out when I actually do something. How about that? <laughs> okay. It sounds good. All right. Um, thank you for, for having me on. Um, I'm hoping I get to rave soon. I don't know how to end this. Um, let's just end it really awkwardly. I love you, bitch. Bye-bye. <laughs> So once again, thank you guys so, so much. And also, if you guys like some wonky dubstep, that intro was by Scudda, a.k.a. Scudda Music. They are on SoundCloud, a.k.a. Uh, Scudda Music on SoundCloud. And they are just so phenomenal and so talented. So my fellow headbangers, go ahead and check them out. Also, if you are not following me yet, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram, Twitter, Base Drop Princess. Also, Best Candy Ever on Twitter and Instagram as well. So if you guys would like to be on Best Candy Ever, go for some really cool candies and have fun. Uh, send me a DM and let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. And thank you guys so much for all your support, Candy Fam. Love you all. Be safe, be safe, be safe, be safe.